So how have you liked the conference so far? It's been pretty great, hasn't it? Yeah, we've really enjoyed it. I don't know how many of you made it over to the quilt show yesterday. How many of you made, wow, a lot of hands made it over to the quilt show. Well, when I came up with the idea of doing a quilt show, I have to tell you, I started having some nightmares about a quilt show. And you wouldn't think that that would be something that would happen, but here's, here's what happened in my nightmare. So you see, while the quilts were on display, a group of knitters suddenly appeared. And a fight started. Well, pretty soon, balls of yarn were flying everywhere, and uh, quilting hoops were flying, and the knitting needles were out. And, and then, just like the UN, a group of needlepoint uh, workers showed up, and they brokered a peace deal. See, the whole debate was which art form was better, quilting or knitting? Well, I got the answer last night in Pastor Stuyvesant's sermon. So did you listen? As he was saying, he said something that made me know that quilting was the higher art form. You see, quilting is piecing material together, and he said, blessed are the peacemakers. <laughs> of a Bible verse that you could ever hear. My, my fellow session members are wondering what they've just done in bringing me on this session. So it's a good thing that uh, I won't be telling many more jokes this evening. Well, our first act tonight for you is a flute quartet. And this is a wonderful group of friends from the Pittsburgh area. Uh, this is uh, Vivian and Ashley and Caitlin and Annika. Girls, come on out and get ready. And they have a delightful song for you called Sparkle on the Dance Floor. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, what a way to start the evening. Thank you. Well, our next act, well, I'm, I'm calling them the Von Blackwood Family Singers because they wouldn't give me any other name to use, so that's what I'm going to use. And uh, Nancy and other folks are going to join us, so take it away, Nancy. Ed and I have been married 31 years. We have six children, three are in Australia, and three in the United States. We're expecting our eighth grandchild next month. We are empty nesters. So that means... One last bell to answer. One last egg to fry. One last man to look after. I should be happy, but all I do is cry. One last bell to answer. treasured tradition of the denomination, so we're going to get to uh, introduce another generation of friends to the Newfoundland Ugly Stick. Tonight we're going to play K 
Ken going to play the real music, the harmonica, and I'll keep me to it. And then I'd like to have somebody come up afterwards. I'll just show you generally how to do it. There's no right or wrong way. Just have some fun with it. And then after the program tonight, we're going to stay around. We'll be on that platform over there. And anybody else who wants to try it out, be glad to give you an opportunity. It's a little known fact that uh, Andy McCracken used to play the ugly stick in marching bands. <laughs> the electric ugly stick. <laughs> well, as we uh, get the stage ready for the next uh, performers, uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about um, the Parnell sibling. So Thomas will be playing the river flows through you, and Evie will be playing Fire Dance. I was going to have them play simultaneously, but it was a little too much to do all at once. So uh, let's go. This will be Fire Dance.
have to admit I'm a, a bit concerned right now about our next act. Uh, he's doing something a little different than he did during rehearsal. He has a ukulele. And as you may know, ukuleles are rightly uh, classified by the Geneva Conventions as a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> They were respectable until Tiny Tim. <laughs> now, you young people may think that you created weird music, Lady Gaga. I mean, she wears an outfit made of meat. <laughs> but this older generation, well, we did weird music before you did it. Look up Tiny Tim sometime. No, don't, don't Google Tiny Tim. <laughs> That'll give you nightmares. <laughs> well, Avery Watson is uh, going to be next, and I'll let him tell you what the name of his act is. And uh, I hope you brought earplugs for the ukulele. <laughs> Actually, I just brought it up because I wanted to look back at the pictures and imagine that I was good enough to play ukulele at RPI 2016. <laughs> so, do we have some pictures? Okay, awesome. <laughs> Wow, it is so great to see so many familiar faces, but also a lot of people that I don't know. So I, I guess I should start out with an introduction. And I know Mark Sampson kind of already introduced me, but I'm going to do it myself, and I'll tell you why in a second. My name's Avery Watson, and I'm so glad that I can introduce myself like that now. Because when I first came into the RP Church, my identity was wrapped up in a man. I'm talking about Avery Man. <laughs> yeah, if you don't know the mans, you're either related to them, or you know somebody related to them. It's one of those families. And when I first came into the RP Church about 11 years ago, and I met Avery and found out that pretty much everybody knew her, she kind of became like my ticket to introduce myself to people, and for us to have this common ground, but also for people to remember my name. It was the most helpful thing. The only problem was that people kind of started to know me as the other Avery. <laughs> yeah, it was like when people were talking about me, they were like, Hey, do you know Avery? Which one? You know, the other Avery. The one that's not a man. <laughs> do you know how hard that is for a guy? <laughs> to be known as Avery that's not a man. <laughs> I got over it, though. I mean, eventually, I, I did get over it. I, I started going to more retreats and things and getting to know people, and, st and people started to get to know me as Avery Watson and not the other Avery. It was great. But one thing you should know about me is I'm a presenter. A presenter? So you do know what that is. I was afraid I was gonna have to explain it. You know, the guy that stands up here and waves his arm around that you never look at? <laughs> Speaking of that, how many presenters does it take to change a light bulb? Nobody knows because nobody ever looks at them. <laughs> well, you know, I love being a presenter. And I don't know about other presenters out there, but I take my pitch pipe everywhere. And I mean everywhere. Sometimes even places where you're not very good for it. <laughs> One of these times happened at TFY, and let me take a brief second to talk about TFY, because TFY is amazing. It stands for Theological Foundations for Youth, and it's for people going in their senior year of high school. And it's typically three weeks long, and the Lord used it in such a powerful way in my life. And so if you know anybody who's thinking of going or eligible to go, please, please encourage them to, because they will grow and learn so much. And no, David Whitla is not paying me to say this. <laughs> Although it could be. Come find me, please. <laughs> But last year, I got to go up to TFY, and I was privileged to be the presenter for a lot of it. Not only during the official times, but also during the unofficial times, like in the car. Okay, singing songs in the car is like one of my favorite things. And you know, the driver gets super annoyed because you sang 144B 12 times, but pretty much everybody else 
loves it. <laughs> but my second week of TFY, I got to spend a little bit of time with Micah Ramsey. He is such a cool guy. And you know, he's probably one of the strongest Christians I know. Seriously, don't mess with that guy. <laughs> but to give you an idea, have any of you ever wrestled him? No, because he wouldn't be here. But anyways, he has some family friends who have this lake pond that we got to go swimming in, and somehow I forgot to take the pitch pipe out of the swimming suit of my... <laughs> and, yeah, it still works. I mean, actually, I have it here with me right now. <laughs> and some of the notes give me trouble, but, you know, overall, it works. <laughs> Just can't go for it. But I kind of feel unworthy to be a presenter. Because one of the first things you learn about being a presenter is that you have to take good care of your pitch pipe. I mean, it's like the number one rule of being a presenter. But even so, I have some advice I want to give. Um, I guess some thoughts. I guess, he said I was going to announce the name of this. I guess we could call it the secret thoughts of an unlikely presenter. <laughs> I like that. Somebody write that down. <laughs> But I'm hoping that this advice will help not only us as presenters, but also you guys, and really all of us, as a body of believers, and specifically in worship. But before I start on giving the advice, I want to talk about something. <laughs> and I know this is RPI, and so a lot of you have been here for a while, and you probably already know about this. If you've been in the church for a year or longer, you probably know all about this. But if you're a little newer, there's something I need to tell you about. <laughs> Salter sharing? <laughs> yeah. It's not what it sounds like. And what I mean by that is nine times out of ten, when people are sharing a Psalter, there's something going on. <laughs> the other 10% of the time, it's because someone actually doesn't have a Psalter. <laughs> but if you're sharing a Psalter with someone, you better make sure that you're in that 10%, because if you're not, the other person's paying a lot of attention to your voice and your breath. <laughs> so just be aware of that. So, I'm going to start on the advice now. Guys, when we're singing the Psalms, look up and smile. I can't tell you how encouraging it is, as a presenter or otherwise, to look around the congregation or a group of people worshiping and to see people beaming joy on their faces. Now, if we're singing about the destruction of Jerusalem, maybe not so much. But if we're singing God's praises, look up and smile. One of the great things about memorizing the psalms is that you don't have to look down at the words. You can look up. And you know, we can encourage one another as we're singing the psalms as well as worshiping God. And you know, you might find that if you show your emotions on your face, that you might find it easier to mean the words that you're singing. So I want to talk to you presenters out there for a second. Guys, we're pretty smart. I mean, not to brag, but there's a lot of things that we know about the Psalter and the Psalms that other people don't know. But let me tell you something. When you get up there to lead a psalm, it is not your time to show off how much you know. But you know what I'm talking about. I've been informed that there are some churches that still use the Red Psalter. That's pretty cool. I mean, the Red Psalter is my jam. But when you get up there to lead a song because the pastor says to sing, we're going to sing 119X, and you're ready to hum the minor triad because you know exactly what you're doing, and you get up and say, Psalm 119X, which is also Psalm 119W, in the book of Psalter. <laughs> Nobody is impressed by that. <laughs> in fact, it comes off as really annoying and kind of distracting. Also, welcome to RBI, where if you didn't know that, you found it out. So, just don't do that, okay? So, my final piece of advice um, is for those of us who aren't the best singers. Yeah, what do I say to you guys? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm right there with you, actually. I, I'm not the best singer. I, I mean, why do you think I picked up you clearly? <laughs> but, I'm going to go off script here a little bit. Because originally, when I had done this, I had a grand finale of jokes, and I had a tie-in to the ukulele, which I still attempted to use. <laughs> and, but a few days, a few, about a week before RPI, I was talking to Joe Allen, who unfortunately was unable to make it. And so I thought, hey, since you're unable to make it, I'll, I'll do this for you, and you can give me advice, and, and I did. And I got to the end, and he looked at me and he said, 
You know, it was really funny. And there was nothing inherently wrong with it. <laughs> but I know a lot of people who struggle with the other side of that, where they won't sing out because they are afraid of their voice or they are self-conscious and self-aware of how they sound. And my first thoughts, the first thoughts when I did my head were, oh, great, got to find a new ending, <laughs> which was a really selfish, self-centered way to look at it. But as I started to think about it, I realized that is my ending. The last message, the last piece of advice I want to give isn't a message from me. It's not even a message from Joe Allen, but really it's, well, the message is sing out. Guys, it's so cool to be here, and RPI is amazing, and I don't care if you're a man or a Kraken or an other Avery, <laughs> you guys sound amazing. And when I hear you guys singing here at RPI all together, I don't go, oh wow, the alto here is amazing. Like, I, I wish my church could sing the alto. No, I, I'm amazed by how many people are joining together, all of us, singing all in unity with Christ, singing praises to the same Heavenly Father, and it's so encouraging. Let's get excited about this, guys, and whether you're a good singer or not the best singer, please sing out. Please be a part of this, and when you go back to your congregations, be a part of your congregations and sing out there. And we're not supposed to be a distraction, but that goes for those of us who are good at singing and those of us who are not good at singing as well. So I really look forward to seeing with you guys the rest of this RPI, and I hope you have a great week. Thank you. Well, I see Drew Gordon down here in the front row. I think I see a new title, maybe, for publication. Secret Thoughts of an Unlikely Presenter. So, we'll have a whole Secret Thoughts series running uh, out of Crown and Covenant Publishing. How many of you are from the Western Pennsylvania area? Here, raise, raise your hand. Well, a lot of people from Western Pennsylvania. When you're watching a hockey game, and especially if you're listening on the radio, I guess it's hard to watch a hockey game while you're listening on the radio, but uh, Pittsburgh has a great broadcaster, Mike Lane. And he, he has a phrase he uses when the Penguins win a game. And what's that phrase? Elvis has just left the building. Have you ever wondered where Elvis goes to when he leaves the building? I have often wondered this. Well, I know where Elvis goes when he leaves the building. He comes here to Iowa, and as a matter of fact, he may be on his way right now. How y'all doing tonight?
It's a good calling. Um, and so Sharon has put together in her typical fashion, uh, perhaps a whimsical look at graduates of RPTS. So the third in her series of parodies, the other two you'll find online. And uh, we'll, we'll pray that the screen comes up. We had some challenges earlier, but are you ready?
I've seen that a hundred times, but I still laugh. <laughs> you saw one picture up there of somebody sleeping on the floor. That's Luke Finley. <laughs> I think Luke has the gift of nap. <laughs> we have pictures of that boy sleeping everywhere. <laughs> Hallways, stairwells, never during class, in between time. You need a power nap, three minutes, he's good to go. <laughs> well, we'll change the pace a little bit, because some of you hurt yourselves trying to do it. <laughs> the Cry Sisters are going to uh, sing for us two songs, Sing for Joy by Handel and The Matchmaker by Jerry Bach as they come out and get ready. Georgia McFarland is going to accompany them on the piano. Uh, prepare to be entertained. Sing for joy, sing out. 
age 7 to 12, did not tell us her last name. So uh, Sheridan's parents, your daughter's doing a good job not telling too much information. <laughs> And uh, Timothy, I promise we will not eat your M&Ms. So. Our next act, the Smith Family Singers, Vicki, Maggie, and Eden, accompanied by Annie McHugh. And they're going to regale us with a song called, How Can I Keep From Singing?
years ago, I left uh, a job at Taco Bell to come to work at the seminary. A little different. That's okay. In college, I studied forestry, so... I also flunked out of college, but that's a different story. Well, I wish I had run into Bruce Martin a few years before that, because Bruce has some ideas about people who might be interested in a career change. So, if you're in that boat, maybe you're kind of tired of what you're doing in your work, or maybe you're getting ready to graduate from college soon and you're not sure what to do, listen to Bruce. I am bringing you today an important PSA about a need that's been unmet for much too long. Perhaps some of you will hear and take up this new career. You may find out it's just the place where you belong. So I ask you to give heed that you might fill this need. This vacancy from now on must cease to exist. We need young people to train on the southwestern terrain to take up the work of the rattlesnake dentist. <laughs> Dentists work on elephants and on horses while they pant. Veterinarians clean the teeth of cats and dogs. It's not good for their health and it hurts their keeper's wealth if they're not careful to keep up their dental logs. <clears throat> It's the same for other beasts. They just can't brush their own teeth. They need your help. At land, on land, at sea, or in a tree. But there's not a man alive who is seeking to contrive to, to, to make a living in rattlesnake dentistry. It can be embarrassing to slither out on the plane when one fang goes a different way from the other. They need one who is aces at giving them new braces, so they'll have looks that are loved by more than mother. You could fix an overbite, or the dangerous underbite. <laughs> to make it easy to, sw to swallow mice and rabbits. You could extract wisdom fangs to prevent future pangs. <laughs> and teach them to observe good dental habits. And when they go to battle and make their tails rattle, how horrified they'll be if a fang is missing. You could learn to replace it, or to cap one that's chipped so they can go their own ways merrily hissing. If one needs a root canal, he'll try to hide with his pal. So be careful. That you, must, that you guard yourself against an attack. You need to use your best wit to be sure that you don't get bit, and you should guard against an ambush at your back. There's no need for Novocaine to keep them from feeling pain, just teach them to use a little of their own venom. You only place a small drop strategically at the top of the damaged fang where it's rooted in the gum. So I, I pray you, consider please putting their small minds at ease and begin now to prepare to take up this slack. Just think how good you'll feel as they take in each meal when you tend to the dental needs of the diamond back. Thank you. I have no idea what to say after that. Well, our, our next group, a trio of sisters, Juliana, Hannah, and Sarah Miller, and uh, they're going to use just about all the equipment we have available on stage, uh, which is cool because it gives the sound guys lots to do this evening. So come on out, 
gals, and uh, we have a, a song, Come By the Hill.
Sonata for flute and piano, the third movement. Uh, this is Lori Gilbert and Rebecca DeGraff from the Grace Gibsonian Church. Otar Taktakishabili. Pretty close, maybe. He's a communist era Georgian composer, not Atlanta, but the other Georgian way over there. Uh, but this is a really neat piece, so please welcome Lori and Rebecca.
I had a look at Rebecca's music earlier, and those of you who are musically inclined, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, things like that, she said she had thousands of notes on that, and it was just solid black. Just <laughs> well, as we get ready for our next act, uh, how many of you like Shakespeare? Wow, this is an educated crowd. Some could take it or leave it. Well, we wanted to find an act that can help you appreciate Shakespeare more. I'm not sure this act is gonna do that, but... <laughs> I want you to listen for the following Shakespeare plays. Macbeth, Hamlet, Romeo and Juliet, and Julius Caesar. Not necessarily in that order. Uh, Daniel and Samuel Carr will, will give us a musical excursion for Shakespeare. Fasten your seatbelts.
Hi, Lou. I'm sorry about the piano, but I think it's played its last note. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to be a brother in that family? I know I would. Our next act is here under the tightest of security. And all I can say, all I can tell you about them is what they told me to tell you, and it's their back. Glasses, don't care what the mass is. Think about me with my sweet goatee. I'm rocking my Taurus with the cuff and a crease. I got that St. John Bay and I clip for my piece. I look nice. I got dozens of dollars and that's right. Go straight to my daughters and my wife. I'm a miracle dad. Make a magic with the check and then the town in the head. Oh, Money, but say what they be driving by. Peeping my landscape, build these dreams. Got nothing on my landscape. Attentions, begonias, crane myrtle. Oh, no, the turtle. The hold up is that a weed in my rescue? Ah, oh, no. round up to the rescue. It's a dad's life. It's a dad's life. Take my thought into the party. It's a dad's life. It's a dad's life. It's a dad's life. I'm shooting beads to the kids. It's a dad's life. Roll up to the splash pad. Set it. Yeah. My whole entourage hops at the minivan. We splishy splashy for an hour or two. Then it's back to the house. Prepping for the barbecue. Brats, dogs, rackers, whatever. Get me on the weather, man. Nobody does it better. Call me boss of the grill. I'm king of the coals. Made my secret recipe. You know how it goes. 1080p, 16 by 9 I'm rocking in keep status with the screen like mine. Keep your peanut butter hands on my 50 inch video. Pop up the cone. Roll the Disney video. <laughs> now we're gonna laugh, chat, a boo. The genie with kids like mine. Everybody wants to keep me singing. Now that song, and then it's up to bed. Cause this is the dad's life, no more to be sad. It's the dad's life. It's uh, the dad's life. It's the dad's life. It's the dad's life. It's the dad's life. It's the dad's life. You know how we do it? It's the dad's life. You know how we do it? It's the dad's life. Get out of the way and let you rip. Um, this song is called Completed Thee. It is uh, it's arranged by Ben Everson. It's actually the words of a, a deeper, longer history than that, but there was a new melody uh, by Ben Nice and uh, Ben Everson recorded this first time I heard it, and we're glad to present it to you. Justify your blessed thought and say 
Someone's got to pay for something like this, and so we've been uh, thinking about who, who ought to, you know, find a night like this and who we could find to uh, really pay for a show like this. So hopefully uh, the person that we're after will come out here soon and uh, we'll be able to give um, <laughs> the Who are those two old men, Mummy? <laughs> and the mother just saying, are they still alive? <laughs> but, uh, at any rate, Bob McFarland, Bob McCracken. And when we sent out the note to those that sung cover court, sometimes it's 47, like Ken Smith and uh, like uh, Dick Weir, and Tim Pennington, and his mother, they're unable to count them here. Why, they were able to come, so the two of us came. We thought of singing a duet, but <laughs> yeah, you'd be glad to know we're only representing something to save this group so they have a sponsor, because they got a lot of expenses. But I hurry. Let me, let's first of all, mention our MC. He's been giving it to several people here, and I think he ought to take some himself, don't you? <laughs> Mark seemed to know that they were going to be preaching on mercy today, and he recalled the day that he called there in the home in Pittsburgh, and this dear lady had a great big bowl of nuts there, and as he talked, he just slipped his mind and took a big mouthful of nuts, and realized, he said, I'm sorry ma'am, I've taken some of your nuts. She said, that's okay, sonny, I already licked the chocolate off of them. <laughs> group to stand beside a group like this, 
And uh, we've come to your rescue since about 1952. We've had a very good sponsor called Neutrina Chicken Food. And, but uh, before we sing, uh, I've been listening to the announcements over there, and this is the way Crown and Covenant would put it, uh, <clears throat> something like this. We uh, decided to uh, copyright our chicken food. <laughs> Of yesterday, after our rehearsal, we met and copyrighted Katrina. And uh, if anybody is caught singing this or recording it, we will do knowledge of us. We'll send everybody on this stage to your house. They'll turn loose 150 chickens in your living room. Okay, let's go on to Neutrina. It's been a favorite of us. And, uh, Neutrino was an advertisement that came over the radio when Bob and I lived in Topeka as kids, and uh, we never forgot it. So let's see if you can forget this once we get set. <laughs> these wonderful folks, and uh, let's give everybody a round of applause. <laughs> the technical staff here has been spectacular. Uh, from rehearsal time for now, so Lindsay's not on the technical staff, but perhaps she should be. So our last act of the night, Sean and Katie Donaldson, accompanied by Lindsay Mann, Porgy and Bess. Bess, you is my woman. See you. 
Well, as we say in the wilds of Wilkinsburg, put out the fire, call in the dogs. This hunt is over. <laughs>